be where? Venice was my first choice. But no, you insisted on the Caribbean, and now look at us, lost in the middle of this damn sea without a tour guide because you said we can sail alone. Well, great job, Captain Morgan, master of the seven freaking seas. I tell you, your ignorance is worthy of an award. Jody, we're fine, so just relax. Small boat rocks with the battle for control and the relationship between two tourists out in the middle of the Caribbean Sea on a gorgeous early sunny morning with huge thick white clouds, turquoise sky, aqua green water, and a slight breeze. Relax, Michael? How the hell am I supposed to relax? Now that I can't see land and you can't put the sail up because your self-proclaimed sailing abilities are terrible. The man said, do not go too far out because at this time in the day, the weather can change at any moment, meaning it can get rough. But did you listen? Of course not. That's because you don't listen to anybody but your damn self, Michael. Skin crawls while he messes with the sail that refuses to unfold smoothly. But the harsh cynicism is tough to deal with at the moment. So he retorts with impatient eyes, look, I know what I'm doing, no thanks to you. And it's not my fault the sail came loose. But your constant complaining only adds insult to injury and doesn't help the situation. So make yourself useful and give me a hand. She crosses her arms and smirks with irritation. Hell no. I refuse to help you do a damn thing, Mr. Can't Tell Me Shit. I'm going to sit right here and watch you make a fool of yourself. Sail is close to being unfurled and strung out when the pole shaft slips from his hands, then snaps back into a tight curl, which infuriates the hopeless sailor. God damn it, Jody! You know you really are something special. A real piece of art. Nothing I do makes you happy. I bust my ass all year just so we can have some time alone. But do you appreciate it? Shit, no. Do you ever appreciate anything I do? I seriously doubt it. I work in the rat race. Live in the rat race and feed off the rat race so that you can be happy. And the thanks I get is your constant bullshit about how you don't have enough to shop with when all your major bills are shopping sprees. You're spending all my goddamn money. What a true help you turned out to be. Michael continues his rant. You can't cook for shit. You keep the house so clean, I feel like I'm living in the lobby of an emergency room at the hospital. Maid knows the kids better than you. But does that bother you? Please. Does money grow on trees? I don't think so. Now we're stuck out at sea, and are you of any help? Of course not. Your inability never seemed to amaze me. Lips remain tight as her jaw grinds before she replies with spite. Your infidelities never seem to amaze me. Eyebrow raises with his sharp look. What? She stands before she delivers. Don't what me? They've been going on since the beginning of this marriage, and I've let it go for the kids' sake. But I'm sick and tired of it now. I brought our children into the world, and sleeping with other women has been all the thanks I've ever gotten. You know, Michael, you say I don't appreciate anything you do for the family, yet it's been obvious for years you don't give a damn about my loyal love and sacrifice I have given you all these years. Michael interrupts, sacrifice? What have you sacrificed, Jody? You have never had a need to go to work a day since we've been married. Jody rebuttals, I married you when you weren't shit, Michael. Don't you ever forget that. I believed in you when everyone thought you were just a foolish flunky caught up in some shit way over his head when the money was always going to get right. Meanwhile, we had to scrounge for meals wearing sad clothes. Oh, and speaking of sprees, don't forget that little cocaine spree that you had. That cost us our first house. Did you forget already? Well, all I can say is that you better start appreciating me real soon or your assets will be depreciating even faster. He shakes his head with an incredulous state of mind. I can't believe that you would actually listen to some rumors and lies from your friends who want us to break up so they can get with me when you leave. Come on, Jody. These people mean nothing. I thought our bond was stronger than that. I know you're better than that. At least that's what I thought. Jody counters with a smirk yeah well i guess we were all misled because you're not the best at all things your damn self some man taught me that brow narrows tight and chest pounds adrenaline from the thought of his wife cheating what are you trying to tell me jody she looks out to see genius you need no explanation especially one so good at being the rat teeth grind in hate 
as eyes blaze before he grabs the curled cell and utters with sarcasm, well, you know the rules. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you, because in my house, it's my way or the highway. And if you don't like it, oh, well, she rolls her eyes. Michael, you've been singing the same song for years. Really, it's about time you get a new one. He shakes his head in disgust while he starts to unfurl the cell once again and mutters, Woman, had I known you would be such dead weight, I would have smashed. Michael sprawls towards the edge of the boat as he teeters with his face close to the water once the boat feels the mighty blast from the bottom. Claws on scaly feet disappear fast under the boat, not yet before he gets a quick peek at the monstrosity underneath, which snaps shots of pain throughout his skull that hurts soul. She gets up off the floor to race over and pull him back into the boat, which he sits on the deck pale face in a state of shock as she hollers, Michael, what the hell was that? What just hit us? Insanity within question. His fear keeps him foggy. I'm not sure. I believe I just witnessed. He trails off. So she impatiently dashes to the rear of the boat, desperately searching for a weapon of some sort, tearing through the different compartments. Ages for time is of immense importance. And the thought fires Michael's mindset back to reality, who yells, Jody, thud. Rear of the boat gets tossed into the air, which sends Jody off the boat and into the water while he rolls over backwards to the front of the boat before it smashes back into the water. Pain of a malicious blow throbs his senses while blood flows from the gash above his eye that stings. So he uncurls himself and crawls on all fours slowly to the edge of the boat and searches for his overboard lost life mate. Jody, not a sound except the slap of the water against the underbelly of the boat. So he climbs to his feet for a better view. And that's when, to his dismay, a pool of blood lurks in the near distant turquoise sea. Gutted body of his estranged wife slides from underneath the boat to his surprise that haunts his mind till the end of days as the hazel eyes stare back in horror, mouth open in terror, final scream stuck in throat. Vomit spews from his mouth in chunks as he backs away with disbelief at the sight of ruin and dread. Then scampers mad scared for his life as if maybe the monster knew it was time for him to suffer the same fate. Sobs of responsibility strangle his throat as he grabs hold of a pole, eyes darting everywhere, wondering when, questioning why, knowing how, waiting for the final impact. Out of the water with a dynamic thrust, a monster from another planet leaps into the air. Black talons ache to inflict pain. Fangs snap for the sense of agony and tail rips cannibalistic intention straight through the heart of the foolish man.